But sometimes you can catch Rowan Barrett Jr.'s father, mother, younger brother, and a few neighborhood kids hanging out here. Before RJ Barrett would join Duke after earning Nysmith Prep Player of the Year and Gatorade National Player of the Year accolades in his final high school season. Before RJ Barrett would clock in over 700,000 followers on Instagram. Pretty simple, go to college and go to the NBA and be a star. Before RJ would lead Team Canada to a championship in the FIBA Under-19 World Cup in Cairo, Egypt, and earn himself a gold medal. Canada's first ever gold medal in international basketball competition. I've made a decision that next year I will be attending Duke University. RJ Barrett's the biggest name to come out of Canada since Tristan Thompson, and this kid, he ain't giving us a bad rep off of the court. Now RJ's backstory is also something that's like a science fiction film. Both his parents, they were professional athletes, his mom was a sprinter and long jumper, and his dad a professional b-baller. It's like they borrowed the LeVar Ball family formula. Now on top of this, RJ, he even has Steve Nash as his certified godfather. Now, despite all this potential, his parents never forced young RJ to get into basketball. He naturally gravitated towards the sport, and he decided at the age of 12 that he was going to set his sights on the NBA and make it to the Basketball Hall of Fame. At 15, he reached his father's height of 6'6", six six, and he's become the most decorated teenage basketball player in North America since LeBron James. His coach, Coach K, at Duke University, well, he stated that RJ will be one of the best players in the NBA right away. So we're gonna try something a little new. I'm gonna start asking you guys trivia questions. Here we go. Who is RJ Barrett's celebrity crush? Sound off in the comments down below. The answer will be at the end of this video. I normally never get nervous, but I was, when I was sitting there, I got a little bit of jitters, but. What's going on guys? It's your boy Michael McCredden documenting the life and career of RJ Barrett prior to fame. Here for you, of course, and before they're famous. Now this story, it touches near and dear to my heart because RJ is from the same suburban city here in Canada as yours truly. Now you guys requested this video from our Zion Williamson vid that dropped last week. It did pretty good. And as always, you gotta let us know who's next in the comments down below. We're thinking Taco Fall. You guys gotta let us know, you know where. All right, let's get into RJ. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Rowan Alexander Barrett Jr. was born on June 14, 2000 in good old Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Now both his parents are of Jamaican heritage. His mother Keisha Duhaney was an NCAA sprinter and long jumper, and her sister was a world champion sprinter who ran in the Olympics for Jamaica. No bobsledding for her. It could. Yeah. I can't get my helmet on. His dad, Rowan Barrett Sr., he played professional basketball internationally in countries like Argentina, Venezuela, Greece, Israel, Italy, and France. And he would take his family with him around the globe. Now, during their time in France, well, RJ, he learned to speak some French, something that he would stick to learning even when the family returned to Canada. Now, growing up, his dad was a superstar. And RJ, he told SportsCenter, everywhere we go, people are always talking to him. It's just something you have to live up to. His father was also the captain of the Canada national team and he played alongside Steve Nash. Now the two must have been super close because he made Nash his eldest son's godfather. In fact, Steve Nash, he bought RJ his very first crib. It's a bonus when your godson is the best 17 year old basketball player on the planet. So whenever I need something, just a quick text and he gets back to me. You know, you think about who in your life could you trust. If you're not there and your kid has to grow, for me that, that was definitely with Steve. I actually heard a crazy story about Steve Nash over the weekend. Maybe we should make it before they're famous on him. Let's get back to RJ. Now, despite his dad making a career at a basketball, he didn't force his sons to get into it. He recalled when RJ was just a child, we had a microphone in there, a football, a soccer goal, tennis rackets, but we had a little mini hoop and he kept gravitating towards that. Pretty soon, that's all he was playing with. When his dad retired, the family settled in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, and RJ, he kept expressing a love for the sport. Now with his mother's encouragement, well, RJ Sr., he began to train RJ and his younger brother, Nathan. Now speaking about the coolest place in Mississauga, well, RJ said, Square One Mall. It's 10 minutes from my house. People here don't know much about Canada, but Mississauga is a pretty cool place to be. Shout out to Square One. It's also 10 minutes from where my mom and dad live. 
Now, while attending Horizon, Unisys, and Clarkson, Mississauga, well, he led his team to the city title for French elementary schools and was named MVP. RJ played all sorts of sports, trying a little bit of everything. He did the 100 meter and sprinting, he did high jump, he played soccer, and a little bit of lacrosse. That's, uh, that's Canada's national sport, if you didn't know. Now, he also found time for something you wouldn't have expected. I used to play the piano when I was younger. Okay. Not anymore, though. <laughs> no, not took anymore. basketball instead. Yeah. In grade seven, RJ, he was forced to choose between soccer and basketball, and the decision, well, it became an easy one. He became part of Canada's Basketball's Junior Academy, which brought together the best players his age in a group for a number of weekends over the winter, as well as a week-long camp focusing on training and conditioning principles, and technical skills, and the nuances of the international game. This also had him competing for the provincial Ontario team. It was at this age that he had decided that he was going to push himself to make it to the NBA. He studied the gameplays of LeBron and Kevin Durant endlessly, and he would practice all their moves at home playing on a neighbor's court, and he would put in endless hours of practice. So if you could eat dinner with one person, who are you eating with and why? Um, LeBron James. Just, he's my favorite player, so... He quickly began to show an aptitude for the game that his father never had at his age. Now raising a sports prodigy, it becomes a commitment for the entire family. RJ's parents, they would get up early in the morning to drive him to workouts and also commit to driving him across country. We're talking 13 or 14 hour drives. This would be for like them basketball tournaments. Now the only games his dad ever missed, well that was the one out in Egypt. You know, the, uh, the World Cup one but we'll get into that a little bit later. For high school, he was enrolled at St. Marcellinus Secondary School in Mississauga, and uh, he only attended there for a week. He had been tapped as the best Canadian prospect for 2019, so the kid had a few options. Now with so much potential, he decided to make the move to the United States. He was then enrolled at Mont Verde Academy, which is located outside of Orlando, Florida. He made the move in 2015, and if you don't know this school, well, it's about the same place Ben Simmons was just finishing up at. So they had a pretty good rep. When I moved to Montverde Academy, and I was able to go to Jordan Brand International game and just started Steve home from there. That really showed me that I could really play at this level. By now, he had reached the height of six foot six, which matched his father's. In fact, his father had actually shaved off an inch. It happens. Now the transition to Montverde, it came with stiffer competition, and at first it was a little rough. But quickly, RJ, he became a standout star. He earned MVP honors and would lead the academy in scoring. In his sophomore year, he was ranked USA Today High School Sports All-USA preseason team, and he was the MVP at Basketball Without Borders, which is a three-day camp held during NBA All-Star Weekend. Now, his coach from this camp, Fred Vinson, he had this to say about the promising young athlete. I love the kid. I think he's really, really talented. He can handle the ball, can get to the basketball at will. He's tough, he's competitive, he can go both ways. Offensively, defensively, he's not afraid to guard the best player on the other team. As a coach, you can't ask for much more, which is why he's the camp MVP. He also kept his grades up and when asked about school, he said his favorite class was Introduction to Philosophy. He stated, we were able to discuss matters that are going on around the world and how you can change things. I actually hate philosophy. I failed it and it resulted in me like not graduating high school on time. Let's move on. And by his junior year, RJ, he had led Montvert to become the number one ranked team in the nation. He swept through every major national player of the year award. I'm talking the Nysmith, the Wooten, the Gatorade, USA Today, Max Preps, and more. After leading Montvert Academy to the Geico Nationals Championship and an undefeated season of 35 to nil, well, the Canadian stud averaged 28.7 points, 8.5 rebounds, 4.5 assists, 2 blocks, and 1.5 assists per game. This is the same year he also competed in the FIBA Under-19 Basketball World Cup. Now, the team beat the USA, and then they beat Italy, and, uh, well, this resulted in RJ taking home a gold medal. He was also named the tournament's MVP and named the tournament's All-Star 5. Sadly, that's the game where his father didn't make the trip out to Cairo. You know, them Olympics and them Canadian teams. It's just not in the budget. Now, he became the most decorated teenage basketball player in North America since LeBron James. He finished high school as the overall number one ranked recruit. He was recruited to plenty of schools, including Arizona, Duke, Indiana, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Oregon, Texas, UCLA, and USC. In the end, well, he felt most at home at Duke, and he thought there was no better coach to have on his side than good old Coach K. Really everything all together, you know, along with 
with Coach K, everything just made sense. RJ made his preseason debut for Duke on August 15, 2018 in an 86-67 win over the Canadian team Ryerson University Rams. Take that. <laughs> he probably felt bad. Now, at the end of Duke's regular season, Barrett was named a member of both the Sporting News All-American First Team and the All-ACC First Team alongside teammate Zion Williamson. Now, things have been heating up for the team with March Madness currently in full force at the time of this recording. And by the looks of things, well, we have a new Canadian superstar to root for after Tristan Thompson went and let us all down by getting it on with them Kardashians. Let's hope our boy RJ doesn't fall for the temptation to Hollywood. Although while working on this script, I found out his celebrity crush is none other than Zendaya. So, uh, well, yeah, that's the answer to our question off the top. Now the story doesn't end just there. His younger brother Nathan, he's following in his big bro's footsteps and he has since joined Bunt Verde Academy. So I might be making a video on him, well, in a couple of years. As for the rest of the story, well, we're gonna wrap this one up here because of course, this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCredden, and if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel. You can also check out our athletes playlist. Zion Williamson, he's on there, but we've done athletes from all corners of the sporting world, from the NFL to the UFC. Also, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and uh, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends to subscribe. I'll see you guys in another video.